Good evening, everybody. Tonight, we are going to be presenting resolutions. Uh, when you hear a name called, please come up, accept your resolution. For parents and guardians, if you'd like to have your child's picture taken, just give us a high sign, and we'll make sure we try and slow them down a little bit. Our first resolution is for Josias Pulhos, an eighth grader from Avenel Middle School who placed first in the 2018 National Fire Information and Rescue Education Bowl Challenge. The National Fire Bowl Challenge is an annual competition testing seventh and eighth graders' knowledge of fire safety. Uh, Josias placed first in the competition. Congratulations. Sean Joseph, an eighth grade student from Avenel Middle School, volunteered at the Parents of Autistic Children POAC Walk for Autism, which was held on May 6, 2018 at Matthew Jagel School No. 8. Thank you, Sean. If, if you would like to take a picture, please feel free to come up as, as close as you need to be. Namit Agarwala, a sixth grade student at Island Middle School, participated in the perennial math sixth grade virtual competition on May 16, 2018. And Namit received first place in the competition, defeating 27 participants from around the United States. Congratulations, Namit. Moby Street School No. 1 participated in 2017-18 Middlesex County Food Organization and Outreach Distribution Services School Food Drive. The food drive help prov helps provide food and other basic necessities to all Middlesex County residents in need. Moby Street School No. 1 was one of the top five schools in Middlesex County collecting over 4,000 pounds of food. Congratulations, Moby Street. On May 10th, 2018, the, our annual middle school spelling bee, sponsored by the Rotary Club of Woodbridge, was held at Woodbridge High School. Placing third from Avenel Middle School, Mega Rajashaskaran. <laughs> second place from Colonia Middle School, Patrick Bajka. and the Woodbridge Township Middle School Spelling Bee Champion, Leanna Moy from Avenel Middle School.
these are all the same. Yeah. Okay. No, not the whiteboard. That's right. Many of our elementary schools participated in the Middlesex County Food Organization and Outreach Distribution Services School Food Drive. District-wide students collected over 18,000 pounds of food to assist in the ongoing efforts. Thank you and congratulations to the following elementary schools. Claremont Avenue, school number 20. <laughs> Colonia High School, Colonia Middle School, Indiana Avenue, school 18, Morby Street, school number one, Oak Ridge, school number 21, Pennsylvania Avenue, school number 27, Port Reading School number nine, Robert Masenic School number 26, and Woodbridge Middle School. Thank you, congratulations. Rose Degnan, a fourth grade student at Fort Avenue School number four, 14, has demonstrated a high level of commitment to helping others. She graciously spends her lunchtime reading, tutoring, and assisting the students in the autistic class at Ford Avenue School number 14. Thank you, Rose. Pennsylvania Avenue School number 27 student council for the past 25 years has organized two food drives a year to help support various food pantries throughout Woodbridge Township. The food drives help provide food and other basic necessities to all Woodbridge Township residents in need. Thank you to school number 27 and to the student council and advisors Marcella Aldridge and Gina Crace. Lois Yuckman, attendance officer of the Woodbridge Township School District, has been selected to receive the 2017 NJEA Educational Support Professional of the Year Award. Congratulations, Lois. Home Depot of Colonia has become a leading supporter of the Woodbridge Township School District. The Home Depot has portrayed an abundance of generosity and support for, for our local school district. The Home Depot of Colonia has generously donated over $1,000 worth of utility buckets and water to Claremont Avenue School that will assist the students in assembling emergency buckets for each classroom. Thank you very much, Home Depot. In 
Investors Bank has become a leading supporter of the Woodbridge Township School District. They have portrayed an abundance of generosity and support for, local, for our school district. Richard McDermott, director of Reverse Home Mortgages and Investors Bank, has generously donated tickets to the Marvel Universe live show that included a luxury suite, food, and beverages to all the students at the Woodbridge Township School District RISE program. Thank you very much, Mr. McDermott. Recently, a student at Ford Avenue School 14 suffered a life-threatening medical emergency. Paul Ludwig, the supervising custodian, acted immediately in a crisis situation and was able to assist the student from choking, and in this instantaneous emergency reaction was instrumental in saving the life of the student. Thank you, Paul. Gary Whitson, Executive Director of Parents of Autistic Children, POAC, has become a leading supporter of the Woodbridge Township School District. POAC is the largest nonprofit organization providing countless hours of free autistic training for our staff. This invaluable training allows our staff to pass along the knowledge and the support necessary for students to reach their full potential. On May 6, 2018, the POAC Woodbridge Walk for Autism was held at Matthew Jago School Number 28, raising over $26,000 for POAC. Thank you very much, Mr. Whitson. The Program for Advancement of Children's Education, PACE Parents Organization, assisted in coordinating the Parents of Autistic Children, POAC Walk for Autism, which was held on May 6. The PACE Parents Organization played an integral role in raising the $26,000 in the POAC Walk. Thank you very much to PACE. The President's Council of Woodbridge Township is an organization that promotes interest and understanding within the school district through the informed participation of parents. The President's Council has portrayed an abundance of community support for, a local, for our local school district by hosting the 51st Annual Scholarship Dinner Dance. The President's Council provided invaluable support and awarded the school district a total of $6,000 in scholarships to four students at each of the three high schools. Thank you very much, President's Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to do a repeat because uh, Mr. McDermott just arrived. Investors Bank has become a leading supporter of the Woodbridge Township. Investors Bank has portrayed an abundance of generosity and support. Richard McDermott, Director of Reverse, Mortgage, Reverse Home Mortgages, Investors Bank has generally donated tickets to the Marvel Universe live show, that included the luxury suite, food, and beverages to all the students of the Woodbridge Township School District RISE program. It was a fantastic event, and thank you very much, Mr. McDermott. Also, thank you to uh, Brian Molnar, Board Member Brian Molnar, and Councilman Brian Small for attending that uh, wonderful event. The Rotary Club of Woodbridge, Perth Amboy, has become a leading supporter of the Woodbridge Township School District. The Rotary Club has portrayed an abundance of generosity and support, and they have generously donated $1,500 to the Woodbridge Township Middle School Spelling Bee. Thank you, Rotary Club.
Dylan Music has become a leading supporter of the school district. They have portrayed an abundance of generosity. Stephen Dillon, proprietor of Dillon Music, has become a sponsor of the annual Woodbridge Township Middle School Spelling Middle School Band Day. And the generous contributions made by Steve Dillon, proprietor of Dillon Music, assisted the middle school band students in experience a professional music clinician and enjoyed refreshments after the annual Woodbridge Township Middle School Band Day performance. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. Thank you. And congratulations on your time. A career fair for students at all three high schools was held on Friday, April 13, 2018 at the Woodbridge Community Center. The career fair was collaboratively organized by board member Brian Molnar, deputy director of the Woodbridge Township Recreation Department, Eileen Caggiano, and the Woodbridge Township Recreation Department, and Quinzel Bunch, teacher at Woodbridge High School. Thank you very much for your efforts. That was a great day also. <laughs> Band director Sarah Benkert, Amanda Bolton, Jeffrey Leidner, and Mark Willenbrock helped coordinate the third annual Woodbridge Township Middle School Band Day, which was held on April 14, 2018 at Colonia High School. The Wood Woodbridge Township Middle School Band Day was a collaborative collaboration of music between students and teachers from various middle schools. Thank you very much to Sarah, Amanda, Jeff, and Mark. The annual district-wide special needs prom, an evening under the stars, was held on Thursday, May 10th, 2018 at the Grand Centurion in Clark. Middle and high school students from the self-contained special needs classes were invited to attend this event, which included dancing, catered food, and trophies. The prom was coordinated by Michael McCabe, teacher at Woodbridge High School, with, with the assistance of Stacy Huber, also a teacher at Woodbridge High School, Jessica Miller, teacher at Colonia Middle School, and Lauren Middle, teacher at Colonia Middle School. Thank you very much to Michael, Stacy, Jessica, and Lauren. The Woodbridge Township Education Foundation is the leading supporter of the Woodbridge Township School District. The foundation has donated $6,500, which will facilitate the purchase of 3D printers for select schools in the district and provide $250 scholarships to each of the high schools. Thank you very much to Christina Garrison and Evie Sue Sullivan. The Middlesex County Sheriff's Office presented the Drug Abuse Resistance Education DARE program to the elementary students of the Woodbridge Township School District. The DARE program was designed to equip students with drug information to enhance self-esteem and to develop decision-making skills that are required in the prevention of drug abuse among school children. The following law enforcement officials performed a valuable service to the students of the school district. Sheriff Mildred Scott, Sergeant Frank Sautner, Officer Robert Geraldo, Officer Tracy Melillo, Officer Christian McRae, Officer Daniela Ikevu, and Investigator Brittany Brodniak. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Woodbridge Township School District Annual Adaptive Physical Education Track Meet was held on May 23, 2018 at Colonia High School. Norma Grasso, Adam Bloomberg, and James Christopher dedicated much time and energy to provide an enjoyable competition for children with special needs. Thank you very much to Norma, Adam, and James.
The Woodbridge Township School District held the annual Ernest Dubay Elementary Track Meet on June 2nd, 2018 at JFK Memorial High School. Now that event was canceled several times and uh, took, took a great deal of uh, organizing to get that off the ground and unfortunately is cut short due to weather, but uh, by no means a reflection of the efforts of the two coordinators, Colleen Wagner and Jill Chachachanowski. James Danch, teacher at Colonia High School, received the Partners in Science Teacher Award at the 2018 Intel International Science and Engineering Fair in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. James Danch was instrumental in mentoring a Colonia High School student whose research project earned numerous prestigious awards at the International Science and Engineering Fair. Thank you, Mr. Danch. Mr. Danch is truly one of our best teachers. Ashley Daly, a teacher from Woodbridge High School, held a fundraiser during the Autism Awareness Week, and Ashley Daly helped raise over $462, which was donated to the Adachavi Autism Foundation, a small nonprofit organization working to, to spread autism awareness. Thank you very much, Ms. Daly. Sabrina Benicazzo, a teacher from Ford Avenue School Number 14, created the Seeing the World in a Different Way program during the Autism Awareness Month. Seeing World in a Different Way program facilitated the presentation of grade level assemblies, teaching lessons, and related activities promoting autism awareness during Autism Awareness Month. Thank you, Sabrina. The following 12 teachers participated in the Bubbles for Autism Day held at Matthew Jago School Number 28. The Bubbles for Autism Day began as a preschool classroom activity in 2004 and has now become a worldwide event to teach children about autism awareness and acceptance using bubbles to create a connection between people. Thank you very much to our teachers, William Anderson, Danielle Durazmo, Jessica Giannone, Lisa Manetta, Kimberly Bernardo, Rebecca Gardner, Megan Jackal, Samantha Ratajak, Mary Beth Cayley, Jeanette Graskowski, Jenna Levy, and Lori Vander Wyden. Thank you very much. The June 14, 2018 meeting of the Woodbridge Township Board of Education will please come to order. Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Bourdain. Mr. Delapetro? Here. Mr. Molnar? Here. Mr. Sedana? Here. Mr. Tamborello? Here. Mr. Velez? Here. Mr. Trebowasser? Here. Mr. Secretary, will you please make a note in the minutes that Mr. Harris is detained due to a work related issue and will not be attending the meeting this evening? So noted. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Secretary, as required by the Sunshine Law, please read the notice of meetings. Thank you, Mr. President. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Board of Education has caused notice for this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted as follows. January 10th, 2018, emailed to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Municipal Clerk's Office, posted in Avenel Middle School, and the Board of Education Administration building. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Del Petro, will you please read the closed session statement? Thank you, Mr. President. In compliance with the Sunshine Law, the Board must go into closed session in order to, to discuss subjects exempted from the public portion of our meeting. Discussions to be held in closed session will be uh, regarding personnel matters. There will also be discussion regarding the superintendent's evaluation and merit pay. Any information regarding the closed session discussion will be released to the public when the reasons for discussing these matters in closed session no longer exist. I have a motion by Mr. Delapetro. Do I have a second? Second. 
I have a second by Mr. Molnar. All opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Board will recess at 7 o'clock. Please rise for a salute to the flag and a moment of silence. Do I have a motion to reconvene the meeting? So motion. I have a motion by Mr. Molnar. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Delapietro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Ms. Anderson was unable to attend due to a work conflict. Ms. Bourdain? Here. Mr. Delapietro? Here. Mr. Molnar? Here. Mr. Sedana? Here. Mr. Tamborello? Here. Mr. Velez? Here. Mr. Trebowasser? Here. Will somebody make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting? So motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sedana. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Mr. Secretary, please state for the record any notice of bids received by the board. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on May 24, 2018, bid PD 19-05, Friedrich Window Air Conditioner Units. May 24, 2018, PD 1909, Asphalt paving resurfacing for the district wide. May 31st, 2018, PD 1907A, lumber supplies and materials. June 6, 2018, PD 19-10, security cameras at select schools. June 6, 2018, PD 19-11, boiler inspection, maintenance and repair. June 8, 2018, 001113, exterior envelope renovation at the Indiana Avenue School 18. And finally, June 8, 2018, RFQ for copiers district-wide. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Secretary, please state for the record any communications the board has received. Mr. President, um, none at this time. Dr. Zega, please state for the record the superintendent's report for the month of May 2018. Mr. President, I have the following reports to present to the board, the student registers and security and fire drill reports, suspension reports for elementary and secondary schools, bomb threat reports, and the reports of the attendance officers. Thank you, Dr. Zega. Dr. Zega, do you have any recommendations this evening? Mr. President, I have 23 items to present to the board. Uh, do I have a motion for the superintendent's agenda? So motion. I have a motion by Mr. Molnar. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Delapietro. Any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? <coughs> Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Bourdain? Here. Uh, yes. 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 Mr. Del Petra? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Mr. Sedana? Yes. Mr. Tamborello? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Yes. Policy and planning, Mr. Molnar? Thank you, Mr. President. The Policy and Planning Committee, on the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, presents the following. Tonight, I will be moving 11 items. I have a motion by Mr. Molnar. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Del Petra. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? Please come to the microphone and state your name, Mr. Pinkowitz. Sure, it's David Pinkowitz, uh, Islan. The Superintendent of Schools and the Board of Education are proposing today to invade the privacy of our high school students, which will include my two daughters, by randomly testing them for drug or alcohol simply because they choose to participate in a sport or other extracurricular activity or because they obtain a parking permit for school. While it's important that students are educated on the dangers of drugs and that substance abuse programs are available in the schools and community, this policy is the wrong way to do it. The superintendent based this proposal on what he views as staggering statistics on drug abuse, yet the actual facts are not so clear. An annual survey of drug usage among teens has been conducted every year since 1975. This survey called Monitoring the Future has been cited as a resource in all the key opinions related to the random testing of students. Yet according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, which is part of the National Institutes of Health, 
Uh, the survey indicates that the use of illicit drugs other than marijuana held steady at the lowest levels in over two decades. Far from a crisis, drug abuse among high school students is being reduced without the implementation of any intrusive testing. What about opioids? Despite the rise in opioid and overdose deaths among adults. Excuse me one second, Mr. Pinkwitz. Mr. Secretary, will you make a note that Ms. Anderson has been able to join us? So noted. Go ahead, Mr. Pinkwitz. I'm sorry. I apologize for the interruption. What about opioids? Despite the rise in opioid and overdose deaths among adults, the origin of scary news reports, the survey, uh, the, the origin of very scary news reports, the survey reports that among teens, it dropped significantly over the past five years. Policy should be dictated by actual facts. And the actual facts do not support intruding on the privacy of our youth in this way. The proposed testing is a solution in search of a problem. The courts already recognize that students have a right to privacy. It is for this reason that the district focuses only on, quote, voluntary activities as a closely divided Supreme Court in a decision written by conservative Justice Clarence Thomas said for these, testing could be allowed. The district cannot test all students. But just because an intrusion may be permitted does not mean the board shouldn't carefully consider the policy. What do experts think? The American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend random drug testing in schools as there's no clear evidence to support its effectiveness. These are our children's doctors. Also, studies have shown that students who participate in school activities are less likely to use drugs, yet the proposed policy will take those very activities away. The only choice for a student who objects to a drug test, even if, they never, even if that student never uses drugs, is to cease these activities. The idea that these activities are, quote, purely voluntary is challenged by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg in her dissent in the Supreme Court case I mentioned previously. Justice Ginsburg states, while extracurricular activities are voluntary in the sense that they are not required for graduation, they are part of the school's educational program. For that reason, the petitioner here and after school district is justified in expending public resources to make them available. Participation in such activities is a key component of student of school life, essential in reality for students applying to college and for all participants, a significant contributor to the breadth and quality of the educational experience. Students volunteer for extracurricular pursuits in the same way that they might volunteer for honors classes. They subject themselves to additional requirements, but they do so in order to take full advantage of the education offered them. Our schools encourage active participation in extracurriculars and particularly point out their necessity for college-bound students. Justice Ginsburg, Ginsburg is right, and we should not make participation contingent on taking a drug test. We should also encourage a trust between the schools and the students. When there's a trust, students are more likely to report when there's a security or safety concern to someone of authority. By having the testing, this trust may deteriorate and important information may not be brought forward. Even if the board will not listen to facts or reason, there is still a concern about testing procedures and getting them right, as a student has no opportunity under the policy to truly challenge the collection and chain of custody itself, as even the appeal requires a retesting of the same sample. I guess we're supposed to believe that the district would do the right thing during this process, yet the first time this board passed a similar policy last month, the policy contained suspensions, even though state regulations specifically prohibited suspensions. If the highest levels of the district cannot follow simple instructions and convince the board to happily follow along to approve an improper policy, how are we supposed to trust a district with something as serious as the privacy of our children? If nothing else convinces you of imposing this policy or at the very least getting more information, it should be this. The district never generally advertised to the wider school population that it was proposing a random drug testing policy. policy. Instead, the superintendent relies upon drug abuse forums held in February with no more than a day's notice for the high schools and middle schools, and with no mention of any proposed policy. Other more enlightened districts held public hearings where the proposed policy was featured. For any such policy to be successful, it must have broad-based support and not simply be passed while the broader school community remains in the dark. The superintendent further relies on legal notices that are required by state regulations. Although, try as I might, I could find no evidence that the appropriate notice was made for this particular meeting. Given that this policy was new compared to last month, 
the notice should be required and this meeting, this actual adoption should not even be able to take place. For all the foregoing reasons, I urge the board to do the right thing and vote no on random drug and alcohol testing. Item 9, policy 5131.8 on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pinkowitz. Are there any other comments or questions from the public? Mr. Pinkowitz, I'll address your statement during the uh, old business. I will refer to the board attorney. Would you please have uh, investigate the facts that Mr. Pinkwitz presented this evening? Certainly, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Pinkwitz, as you're aware, we read, did, as you uh, so adeptly pointed out, that we had made an error in the original policy, and therefore this is the first reading, and there will be a second reading at the next meeting. So uh, us voting on it tonight does not solidify it, but it's still certainly part of the process. You getting up and speaking tonight furthers that process. So uh, I will have more detail from the board attorney to either substantiate or in some way refute what you're saying. I have no reason to believe that what you're saying you don't believe to be fact and 100% and accurate, but I still need to investigate that. So for now, roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson? Yes. yes. She said yes. <laughs> Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapitro? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Mr. Sedano? Yes. Mr. Tamborello? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Yes. No negotiations, Mr. Velez. The Board of Education Committee for Negotiations with the Superintendent Schools present the following three items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. I have a motion by Mr. Velez. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sedana. For one item, Mr. President. I'm sorry? One item. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Gambarella. For item one. one. One item with three subsections, I suppose. It's, it's one item. Am I correct? Yeah. It's one item. It's one item. Okay. It's, only, it's only one item, Mr. Gambarella. Uh, I have a motion by Mr. Velez, seconded by Mr. Sedana. Any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? Seeing none, roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Bourdain? I abstain. Mr. Delapitro? Mr. Molnar? I abstain. Mr. Sedana? Yes. Mr. Tamborello? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? I abstain. Curriculum agenda, Mr. Sedana, please. I'm sorry? Oh, uh, Ms. Anderson, thank you very much for your attendance and appreciate you showing up. Can you please make a note that Ms. Anderson has signed off? Not yet. Oh. Ms. Okay. Anderson, are you signing off? Yes. Okay. Curriculum agenda, Mr. Sedana. Thank you, Mr. President. The Curriculum Committee on the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction present the following nine items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing, foregoing nine items. I have a motion by Mr. Sedana. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Tamborello. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? Yes, sir. Please state your name and where you're from in town. My name is Dan Grossberg from Island. Um, question is, try and like, heck, to follow along what's going on here, but first we can't really hear you over the noise of the machine. I'm not sure if you guys could do anything about that. And secondly, I, it's really hard to hear you guys. I don't even know where we are in the agenda. We're on the curriculum agenda, sir. Curriculum agenda, okay. Thank you. You're is welcome. There, is there anything to be done about the noise? Like, can you speak up a little bit maybe? Uh, 
There's a switch over there. Can turn it off. That better? Roll call, Mr. Secretary, on the curriculum agenda. Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapetro? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Mr. Sedana? Yes. Mr. Tamborello? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Yes. Finance and insurance agenda, Mr. Tamborello? Finance and insurance committee on recommendation of superintendent of schools and the business, business administrator board secretary presents the following 24 items. I move for the adoption of the 24 items. I have a motion by Mr. Tamborello. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second by Mr. Velez. Uh, are there any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapetro? Yes. Mr. Molnar? I'll be abstaining on item number 12. Yes on all other items. Mr. Sedana? Yes. Mr. Tamborello? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Yes. Uh, athletics and extracurricular. Would you please read that, Mr. Delapetro? The, the Athletics and Extracurricular Committee on recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction presents the following six items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. I have a motion by Mr. Delapetro. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Velez. Do I have any quest, comments or questions from the board? Do I have any comments or questions from the public? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapetro? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Mr. Sedana? Yes. Mr. Tamborello? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Yes. Buildings and Grounds, Mr. Molnar, please. Thank you, Mr. President. The Buildings and Grounds Committee on the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrator Board Secretary presents the following. Tonight, I will be moving six items. I have a motion by Mr. Molnar. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Velez. Any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapetro? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Mr. Sedana? Yes. Mr. Tamborello? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Yes. Transportation agenda, Mr. Velez. Thank you, Mr. President. Transportation Committee on the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrator Board Secretary present the following 50 items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. I have a motion by Mr. Velez. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Tamborello. Any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? David Pinkowitz, Islin. Uh, I had a question. Last year, I think, I thought it was later in the summer, because that's why I hadn't requested it at this point. Uh, the renewal of some of these bus routes, and specifically routes covering uh, schools like parochial schools. Non-public. Uh, Non-public schools. Uh, last year, I thought I had a concern that we were paying more for the bus route than we would have had we paid uh, aid in lieu of transportation. Have we verified that, for example, just as one example, the mother seat and costs, if you add them together, I think that was the school I was most concerned with last year, that if you add that together, it's less expensive than if you take all the students multiplied by whatever the current aid in lieu of figure is this year? I'll, I'll verify that with Mr. Mr. Um, Sinelli, I've, but he told me that he assured that everything was correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapetro? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Mr. Sedona? Yes. Mr. Tamborello? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Yes. Personnel agenda, Mr. Molnar. Thank you, Mr. President. The Personnel Committee on the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Director of Personnel Services presents the following. Tonight, I will be moving 38 items. I have a motion by Mr. Molnar. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Delapetro. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? All right, David Pinkowitz, Islin. Just a question, and this is involving two parts of the agenda. Uh, it's involving specifically Ms. Schaefer uh, and her transfer from 
being personnel to being a principal. On item nine in the transfers section, it refers to a date effective of August 28th, 2018. However, in item 38, it refers to a date effective of July the 1st. So my question, and my only question, is what is the effect should the board pass both those items? Uh, what is actually going to happen? It'll be effective as of July 1st, but I believe she doesn't report until uh, August 28th. But I'll make sure that we verify that and that the, the correct time is put in the um, uh, certified board minutes when they get submitted. Right. Thank you. Right. So Mr. Pickwitz, you're aware she's going from a 12-month to a 10-month employee, correct? You're, I'm saying you're aware of that. So, so the contract year for all employees goes for the for administration normally goes from July 1st to June 30th, but she probably doesn't report until August 28th, which is a week prior to the beginning of school. Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Bordan. Yes. Mr. Delapetro. Yes. Mr. Molnar. Yes. Mr. Sedana. Yes. Mr. Tamborello. Yes. Mr. Velez. Yes. Mr. Trebowasser. Uh, I will be abstaining on the name Valerie Henderson and item 15, yes on all other items. Ms. Murphy, do you have any recommendations this evening? Nothing at this time, Mr. President. Is there any old business that should be brought before the board? <clears throat> Mr. Pinkowitz, I just told you that I would make comment on what you had said. I don't disagree with a lot of the things that you said. However, I do think that the opioid and drug crisis in our country is epidemic. And I do think that we have to look at different methods of dealing with things. Although it may not be perfect, everything that has a potential ability to prevent a child from doing drugs and gives them the potential to possibly say, I don't want to do it because I don't want to miss being in band. I don't want to miss being in chorus, I don't want to miss the school play, I don't want to miss football, or any of the other events that they're signed up for. It gives them just one more tool in their arsenal to be able to fight off peer pressure. I don't think it's perfect, and if we find that it is not beneficial and it is not helping our students, I have no problem saying, you know what, we are wrong and we'll abolish it. But we have to do everything humanly possible, in my belief and my belief only, to do everything possible to prevent students from making that peer pressure moment decision and making the wrong one. So I will still have the board attorney look into it and validate everything you said, and if, any, and if it is not accurate, I will make sure that I share that with you privately. Okay, Any other old, anybody else have any old business? Mr. Mr. President, just yes, on, sir, that, Mr. On, that, on that topic. Part of my job is, is prevention for almost 30 years. <clears throat> the opioid uh, epidemic is out of control. If you've ever done CPR on a child when the parents are over your shoulder pleading to save the kid's life, you got to do something. We got the kids in the schools. That's where we get them. That's where we educate them. I'm out in the field every day. Firefighters, EMS, uh, police officers. We bring this stuff home. My daughter's friends. Well, a lot of good friends because of this, ep of this uh, opioid. I'm, I'm quite emotional now because, Mr. Pinkowitz, you come here. We're trying to do good, and you, you keep hammering at us that, 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 that we're not doing good. Trust me, if you've been out in the field, join the first aid squad. Go out on a couple of these calls where these kids are overdosing. Deal with the parents. It's horrifying. You want to talk about PTSD? Talk to any cop, fireman, or EMS. The only, way to, the only avenue that we have to get to these kids is through school. Once they leave school, you'll lose touch with them. I see it with fire prevention. We got the program, we got the senior, we got the uh, Sean and Al coming in to, to uh, uh, preach fire safety in the uh, um, college dorms. Once they graduate, they're gone. We don't have them. The best place to educate them is, is in the schools. That's where we have them. And if, if it saves one kid, if, if one kid gets pressured into doing drugs and he's on the ban and, and he can say, you know what, I can't because I might get drug tested, and that saves his life, man, I'm 100% for it. But we got to do something. And I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I see the end effect, and it's 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 horrifying. So, whatever we have to do, whatever this is, this is the first reading. Whatever we we, we hash it out, work with us. 
Like I said, we're here to do good. We're not here to make, you know, make anybody's life miserable and infringe on anybody's rights. But we gotta do something. We're losing way too many kids out there. And it's not only the kids, it affects the emergency responders, the parents, this affects everybody. This isn't some, you know, like, like, it's, like it's a joke. This is serious. And we gotta get a handle on this. So, I mean, we're, we are trying. You know, I, I, don't, know, I don't, know, don't know what else more to say, but we're, we are trying. So if you wanna work with us, we're more than happy to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Del Petro. Mr. President. Mr. Molnar. My, my big thing on this is when, when students are lost, and they might not be in the roles in our district, when they pass away from this, it's afterwards. It's, it, it's a buildup of time. But one common theme always seems to be the parents who are left behind saying, I had no clue. I had no idea. Because, you know, the, the kids aren't stupid. They're hiding it. They know how to hide it. And you know what? And maybe we got to start teaching our kids that, you know what? You're going to graduate high school, and you're going to go out, and you're going to go to college. And the college might turn around and say, you might be required, if you're going to be on a team or an activity, to submit to a random drug test. They might go out into the workforce. I got my CDL, I was 20 something years old, and guess what? I got random drug tested. I didn't go home and say you invaded my rights. They were the rules for the township of Woodbridge. I wanted to drive a truck, I wanted to work overtime. I submitted to mandatory drug and alcohol testing. I've been doing it for 30 something years. We gotta start teaching our kids that there are consequences and there are rules that you have to go by. It happens already. If our student athletes make a state tournament, the NJSIAA, they random drug and alcohol test the kids. It's happening already. So I agree with everybody on the panel. We'll look for the best thing, possible thing we could do, but we have to do something to start combating this epidemic. We had a group of parents come maybe three months ago, four months ago, and they're a support group for you know, people who have lost a loved one due to this epidemic. It's serious. It, it really is serious. And now we're finding out with these, um, these vapor pens that are going around and kids are finding a way to, you know, maybe marijuana or something like that. I mean, listen, we'll work together, like Mr. Del DePietro said, as a community. And that's all we really could do but we have the utmost safety of the students in mind. We don't want to lose anybody else more to this epidemic. We have to start, we have to draw a line. Education's not doing it no more. They're tired of the same assembly. The assemblies are all the same. We bring somebody in who recovered, who thank God recovered, they tell their story, and the kids are bored of hearing it. It's just the way it is. So we'll work as a community, We'll work together. We're all not going to be on the same page, but let's find some middle ground. But we have to try to do something with this. Thank you, Mr. Molnar. Is there any new business that should be brought before the attention of the board? In keeping with our past practice, we will open this portion of the meeting for statements from the public. If you wish to say something, please come to the microphone, provide your name, address for the record, and please limit your comments to no more than five minutes in accordance with Regulation 1100D. You know, I plan to have concluded my comments for the evening, but I feel it's necessary to respond directly to the comments that were made just before. With all due respect to Mr. Trewasser, Mr. Delapetro, Mr. Molnar, and the rest of the board, the school district, the administrators, if you feel so strongly that this is a right thing to do, if you feel so strongly that you want to work with the community to do it, then you should have demanded that the specific policy be brought forth during the school year, so not now, not when people are going away for the summer and doing other things, but in front of everyone, announced that this is the policy we are thinking about, it's just like the way Livingston schools did it, and talk about it. In the Livingston case, there was overwhelming opposition, and the superintendent pulled the proposal. It may be different in Woodbridge, I don't know, but 
The fact of the matter is that didn't happen here. So the idea that you talk to me as if I don't know, I don't want to work with you, the bottom line is the board didn't want to work with anyone. Because if the board did, the board would have made clear what it was trying to do. That never happened. With all due respect, I, the facts I cited were facts. They were part of surveys that, I, that were legitimate surveys. I know some people have different experiences. Obviously, anyone who's lost a loved one will feel that's the most important thing. We all do when we lose a loved one. But that doesn't change the underlying facts. Students do have privacy rights, and I feel it's a big intrusion on that unless we've gotten the support, the full support of the community. And that never happened because we never requested it. Most people were in the dark, and it got very little coverage. And the idea, and I looked up the drug tests, you know, the drug abuse forms, literally one day's notice. One day's notice with no detail as to what would be discussed. So I don't think that's acceptable. If you think it's acceptable, I'm sorry, but I think you're wrong. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Pinkowitz. Two things. One, we do want to work with people, and I have no problem putting off doing the second reading on this and getting more public uh, participation. But the, the one thing that you said that you're basing all your information in is on surveys, I respectfully disagree with you. A survey is an opinion. It is not necessarily a fact. So that's why I'm going to have the board attorney look into it and see if they can substantiate with fact numbers, actual numbers, how many people have passed, how many people have been OD'd, how many people have been given Narcan. Those to me are the facts. Whether, whether people have a, an opinion on it and fill out a survey and say different things, that's, that is subjective. That is not necessarily a fact. But respectfully, I will certainly make sure that we put this off. I will talk to the rest of the board, and we'll see about doing the second reading after we give the public a little bit more time to have their input. So I think we're coming to a middle ground, which you seem to feel we're not willing to do. If you're willing to come to a middle ground, but I would suggest that if you do it in July just because you want it to start the school year, that wouldn't be the appropriate I don't time. believe that's what I said, did I? You didn't I say, I but you, you, you haven't given me any detail, so I don't know. Was it your expectation that I give you the detail? I haven't talked to the rest of the board. All I'm saying is I am willing to present to the rest of the board, putting off the second vote until we have a chance to get more public opinion and see how they feel about it. That's fair enough. Thank you. Okay. And Dr. Zager, you had a comment? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I was going to ask Dr. Zager, and maybe you'll, why don't you make your comments, and if you don't. Sure. Just, just to set the record straight, we started in February with the, the, the parent nights that you're referring to, and it wasn't just about the, the, uh, the po this policy, this proposed policy. It was drug education. It was statistical um, uh, information that the parents had at some of the uh, forums we actually brought the devices that students and adults can buy to to hide drugs from their parents and to use them um, surveys are and I, I'm very cynical of surveys because surveys you're getting the answers from people that maybe choose to do whatever they want. I, I, I notice several students sitting behind you, and uh, if you were to survey them or survey any students, you may not get accurate information. You're getting survey information. You're getting, it's not accurate information. I had do, I, at those parent forums, I, I gave out accurate information. I gave out hard facts. I gave out the number of times that the Woodbridge Police Department, on average, per week, administers Nar Narcan right here in our town. I know how many times we catch students with drugs in schools. I know how many of our students have died because of overdoses. I've been to those wakes. And one of the things that people ask is the school or state is that the school should have done more. And Mr. Molnar's right. There are only so many assemblies and so many presenters that we can present to the students. And one of the things that I said to the parents at the forums, well, two things I said to the parents at the forums, one was, your children are going to be somewhere, someday, with their friends, and somebody's going to hand them something. And all they have to, to decide whether they're going to take it or whether they're going to pass it is whatever you've taught them and their good judgment. All this policy does is give them another reason to say no. We grew up in the just say no generation. Just say no doesn't work. If just say no worked, we wouldn't have drugs in schools and we wouldn't have dead children from overdoses. So as this board has said, we're trying to do more. We're looking to do something more. And if one person is saved and if one person could say no, 
based on this policy, then it's worth it. It's worth all of it. Then the other thing I said to the parents when we met with them, and it, they weren't very well attended, but they were attended. Mr. Trebosser was there at most of them with me. We, told, we asked them, is anybody emotionally opposed to this policy? And the overwhelming 99% of the people that we talked to were in favor of it. They were actually enthusiastically in favor of it. Okay, so, so we have reached out to the public. So, and we will continue to reach out to the public. This is part of the process. This is why there's two readings to the policy. So the public can comment. But sometimes the loudest comment is not the majority comment. Well, and in a meeting attended on a drug abuse forum for the people that attend, you said were lightly attended, are likely the people that care the most and are worried the most about drug abuse. You, if you don't agree with a randomly selected sample in a survey, you certainly can't possibly believe that that survey in your little meetings has any real meaning. Thanks. Dr. Zaga, Mr. President, through the chair. Yes, sir, Mr. Molnar. So, Dr. Zaga, how many forums did you have? Mr. President, Mr. Molnar, we had one forum at each uh, secondary school, so one at each of the five middle schools and one at each high school for a total of eight. So a total of eight. They were posted on the website? They were sent, they were, we sent out uh, instant alerts to the parents of those schools, and we also sent out uh, email blasts. Okay. Was it posted on our website, like when you were going to have one? At this, the entire schedule was on, but we, okay. didn't, we didn't send out each individual one. Okay, thank we, you. Not to the whole district, we sent it out to each school. Okay, thank you. My name's Mary Klimek from Avenel. I haven't been to a board meeting for a while, so first I just want to ask, um, I see someone different here for the board attorney. Are you just here for the night or is this our new permanent board attorney? May I answer that? Uh, sure. My name is Liz Murphy. I'm from the Bush Law Group. The Bush Law Group represents the board and generally Jonathan Bush is here, but I'm here tonight. You That's may see me again. That's why I didn't know. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I want to bring up another aspect to this because it sounds like you're going to approve it at the next meeting. No, ma'am, that's not what we said. We are not. We're going to put it off and try and get more public involvement in it, which is what I committed to Mr. Pinkowitz just a moment ago. Okay. All right, sorry. Now, what I want to talk about is um, the cost. What I'm actually talking about is the cost of drug testing. I'm a graduate of Woodbridge High School. I also maybe the only one here who's actually been an employee of a drug testing firm. So I know the difference between the material they will tell you, the salespeople and the glossy brochures and what they're going to tell you is involved with actually doing the test and then actually being on the inside and being the person who does the test. And <laughs> what also, I don't have this to show you, but in the past few months, there was an insert in the New York Times. It was all about um, opioid epidemic and different aspects of it. And it had one of the articles was about the uh, rising costs of the drug tests and how these companies are really exploiting the situation and raising the prices for the most basic tests. What, whatever they tell you is involved, I strongly urge the board, Mr. Whoever is involved here with the pay, you know, picking who's going to be the, the company, that you have to get at least five or six and compare the costs because it's going to be way more than you think it's going to be, according to this article in the New York Times. And whatever they tell you they're doing, what actually happens is these companies, they don't want anyone to be positive. They, like you said, they, they, want, they want a lot of negatives because that is really cheap and quick to do. It actually only costs pennies, and that's when I did it. So probably now it's faster and cheaper than when I did it. What, when they just do it on an auto analyzer, and I'm sure they have better things than I did, but at the time I was doing it, it's a huge wheel. And you put 300 different samples at one time and you think there's all these complicated tests. No, you put that in that machine, you run 300 samples, 
and in one thing, it does like 30, 40 substances, one go around. It's, it's only costs a few pennies to do that per sample. Then the positive ones are taken out and then you do more complicated tests. The, the, com the company that's doing the testing really doesn't want any positives because that's where you have to spend some money doing complicated tests. But most of them are negative. But the cost, maybe I let the article from the New York Times, if I could get it back, I would show you where they're talking about how the cost for these drug testing places has really gone up. And you might be totally surprised by the sticker shock. So nobody's talk about the cost of implementing this thing tonight. And you better start getting estimates and start comparing a lot of different companies because this is going to be a really big cost. And whatever, whatever they tell you in those brochures, that's not how it's done. It's quick. It's only a couple pennies a sample until they get something positive. All right, thank you. So, Mr. President, so one question through the chair. Mary, so the district will get charged one price per test administered? Yeah. So Probably. then if there is a positive, then that cost gets incurred by the, the company to no test way. further? No way. I, I, I'm going to try to find this article from the New York Times because it talks about how the prices for these tests have really gone up. It's going to be way more than you think it is. You, you've got to start getting the estimates and start figuring, you know, I don't even know what they're charging right now. Thank you. You know, and then I, well, the company really doesn't want a positive because then you have to do more complicated things. Some of those things really aren't that complicated anymore. All right. Gotcha. Bye. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions from the public? Uh, hi, my name is Swanik Shroker from Island. I'm currently a senior at Kennedy. Um, I just want to give my opinion based on the policy that was proposed regarding random drug testing. Uh, I do have a question from the board on, on why uh, you guys are only focusing on students who are involved in extracurriculars and uh, in athletics rather than testing the whole school population as majority of the students who do involve themselves in uh, illegal substances are most of the time not involved in extracurricular activities so they wouldn't fall under the random testing and thus um, save people's lives. But by putting them through the programs? Mr. President, um, legally we can't test everyone. The law only allows us to test certain groups involved in extracurriculars or students who uh, park on campus. So if, if this goes through, um, students who either are in a sport, a club, the play, the band, and everybody who gets a parking permit as part of their agreement to participate, we'll have to submit a random a, a, a consent to test form. Okay, so and I think it's important that we, we kind of walk through what, what's going on. So the content, every um, so often they would generate at uh, at random student names to be tested. So those students would get tested. Law requires us to test 10% of the people in the testing pool. So at Kennedy, you have about 1,300 students figure all the parkers and everybody in extracurriculars and sports maybe eight or nine hundred so out of the eight or nine hundred people in the pool we'd be required to test at least 80 throughout the year okay so so then nothing would be able to be done about the people who aren't involved in any of the curriculars who are using substances now the the other policy the our existing see our existing policy right now um, if we believe a student to be un currently under the influence in school then we can require them to get a test. But this other, this other policy, and, and just so I could explain the differences, right now, um, if, you're, if you're suspected to be under the influence in school and you're tested and you test positive, there's a suspension from school, there it goes in your discipline record, and there is no required um, counseling. With the new policy, there is no suspension from school. The suspension is from the activity. If the, all the results are completely confidential, we don't share them with your teachers. We don't share them with the police. There's, 
They're, it doesn't become part of your record. It has to be kept separate from your record. It doesn't go to colleges. It doesn't go anywhere except to you and your parents. And there is mandatory um, counseling involved. So it's, it's, it's preventative. We think it's, it, it gives students, I mean, you would know better than me. You know, you're out there and you're going out at night and somebody hands you something. Um, there, I know what peer pressure is. A, a long time ago, I was, I was 17 years old. So I, I, back then, it's probably similar, um, but peer pressure can be very, very strong. And okay, so. we, we feel that this is something that will give you a chance to say, you know what? We have, we have a big performance next week, and if my name gets called and I can't perform, I'm gonna let everybody down. Okay. And that's really what it's all about. So the follow-up question to that, does the board have any plans to implement any future policies to target the groups who unfortunately don't participate in any extracurricular activities? Because I feel personal. Dr. Zeg is right. There's a difference between testing a student who appears to be under the influence and then random testing. That's what we're talking about. In order to, imp to de develop a policy for random testing, you don't look like you're under the influence, but your, your name is picked, you get drug tested. That's the difference. So you can't have random drug testing for the, the general student population. So then, like, theoretically, if I wanted to go and do drugs, I, and, I didn't, and I was an underclassman, so I wouldn't park on campus, and I was a freshman, there would be no way for, and I didn't do anything in school, there would be no way for the board to figure out. Because I that, feel that's like a big pop, like philosophy. I mean, unless you get some, something happens off campus and it, it results in a substantial disruption in school, that's another story. But in order for us to send you out to be drug tested, and you're not one of, one of the, those groups participating in extracurricular activities or parking, we have, to, we have to have a reasonable suspicion that you're under the influence. Okay, so, all right, thank you. The, the answer to your question is no. If you don't participate in, in anything and you don't park on campus, you would never be part of the, the policy. But okay. unless, yeah. right, unless your parents opt you in, so you can voluntarily become part of the, the random pool if you, if yeah. you're, if you ch so choose. But I, believe, uh, I believe one of the board members mentioned earlier that oftentimes parents aren't aware of their students who uh, use any illegal substances. So isn't that like a flaw in the system? Or is that unfortunate? That's correct. That there, there are parents who, you know, their kids could be involved in things and they don't know. I mean, I raised three kids, and I'll tell you right now that I do not know everything my children did when I was not around them. And I don't think there's any parent in this room, and Mr. Pinkwitz could probably agree with me on this, that when our kids aren't around us, we don't know exactly what they're doing. We like to think we have an idea, but to be honest with you, we hope that they, they respond and, and act responsibly and intelligently because that's the way we've raised them. Um, this is really a very difficult situation. I mean, I'm even older than Dr. Zega, so, but I still do remember being 17 at one point in my life, and, and peer pressure is a very challenging thing to deal with. Uh, this is really more to be a tool than a baseball bat, and, and the tool is, is that the kids that we, you know, we'd like to save every child and prevent every child from doing drugs, but the children that are participating in extracurricular activities, um, we don't want them to make a bad choice because of a five-minute thing where they decided to do some drug that is going to impact them for the rest of their lives because, you know, maybe Mr. Pinkowitz can agree with this, heroin is extremely, extremely addictive. And, and one of the things that they're doing now is they're lacing marijuana joints with heroin. It doesn't happen a lot or it does, I really don't know. But I know it does happen. So a child is out, sorry, a young adult is out with their friends and they're at a party and somebody passes them a joint and says, try it. It's really not a big deal, it's just pot. You don't know that. And if you're being randomly tested, you have the ability to say, you know what? I got a big whatever, band, football, baseball, soccer, whatever the activity it is that you're doing. Your parking pass you don't want to give up. Whatever it is, you can turn and say, you know what? You know what, it's not worth it to me. It's just a joint, I'm not interested, thanks anyway. And that's what we're hoping for. We're not looking to catch somebody doing something wrong. We're trying to give people a tool to do something right. So I committed to Mr. Pinkowitz. We will uh, put this on hold as far as the second vote goes so that we can give the public. And I will hope that Mr. Pinkowitz will assist us in getting more of the community involved and showing up to have these discussions. We will schedule four or so meetings at another school 
where public can show up and ask questions, and hopefully we can get a better sense of how our community feels about it. But at the end of the day, we're hoping it's a tool. We're hoping it's a good choice. If I had a crystal ball and knew what the perfect answer was for everything, trust me, I would tell you right now that in seven years, don't cross that street, but I can. Okay. So all I can do is try and make the best decisions possible, and everyone on this board, and I can't speak for them, but I like to think that I know them all well enough that all they really care about is doing what's best for our student population and our community and trying to give you all the proper skills, tools, decision-making processes to do the right thing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Uh, can you hear me right? <laughs> My name is Guillermo Pena from Hope Lawn. I attend John F. Kennedy Memorial High School. Uh, a lot of the attention is being put on students and the responsibility that schools have to provide some kind of safety for students, but I want to speak about what schools can do for parents, um, whether it be for conflicting work schedules, whether it be just due to pure disinterest. Some parents are not involved in their, in their kids' lives and they don't know what they're doing like you had previously stated, Mr. President. So I want to address that in saying that maybe you can send out an email and say, come out to an assembly over at the high school flip uh, uh, reverse the roles instead of having the kids attend um, say one of one of the presentations have the parents attend the presentation make them more aware of how they can combat the drug epidemic the drug sorry I can't speak English drug epidemic and so they can help their kids uh, battle that because sometimes kids they need help from their parents more than they need help from their schools and their school teachers. Don't get me wrong, I love my school teachers and everything they do for me because at John F. Kennedy we have a great education just like every other school here. But to hear encouraging words from your parents, to hear encouraging words from your community to say, you know, listen, it might be difficult, but we gotta pull you away from this. And to hear that from your mom, to hear that from your dad, for them to experience, like you guys have experienced the drug epidemic, it would be beneficial to not only the students but the community as a whole. So, I'm not saying spend, spend, spend extra dollars on an assembly for parents, but I am saying that maybe you can give some type of education for the parents so they can assist their, stu um, their kids along with the teachers and it's cooperation. I'll commit to setting up that meeting if you commit to getting your parents there and 10 of your friends' parents. Okay. Fair enough. So, I'm serious. And the other thing we can do is, Dr. Zega made a great suggestion, we could take this last portion of the meeting where you and the other student were speaking, and we can put that up on our website so parents can see how you all feel about it as well. Okay. Fair enough? Fair enough. Yes, ma'am. Hello, guys. My name is Christine Gonzalez. I'm from um, Island section of Woodbridge. I know most of you. Um, my question is regarding Indiana Avenue School 18. Um, what is the plan of the work orders that are going to be happening there? Because like everybody I'm sure on this board has known, we've lost a bunch of ceiling tiles since returning to school. There's a lot of problems that still exist. The parents, I'm on the PTO there. They're asking me to, to represent some of them here. Um, as to what the game plan is in terms of fixing the inside. I know that the roofing is supposed to start as soon as the kids are out of school because we couldn't do it when they were in school because it wasn't a safe environment, and that's fine. My question is, the inside of the school is obviously in need of repair as well. So my question is, what is the game plan for that for the summertime? There you go. Mr. President, yes, you. Um, we had our consultants walk the building prioritize the needs for the ceiling tiles, floor tiles, and everything else. Um, we also, I believe we received the bids on the exterior of the building. Um, that the plan is to get as much work as we can get done over the summer, starting with the highest priority, ceilings and floors. We don't know yet how much of it we're going to get done because it has to get bid. The previous work that we did, that was all kind of emergency right. and state contract but we, we, uh, we are going to work with our um, consultant to put together a multi-year plan to address all these things each time the kids are out of the building. Okay, because the roof that was the problem in the first place that caused a lot of this issue that we have, it's still leaking. And I don't know if you guys have been there recently. I was just there, I've been there all week this week because we've had a lot of events happening. It smells like mold horrifically in the front office. If you go by the principal's office, it stinks. And the door is closed, and it smells awful. 
You can smell this mold. The, the floor tiles in the principal's office are popping up already. So all that work that was just done needs to be redone again because it wasn't taken care of because the, the roof, the flashing is the issue that we were told. Now, I know that some of the outside work was done, but I know a lot of it couldn't be done because of the situation and everything. It was going to take too much time, and then the kids needed to get back to school. But now the problem that we initially started with is back. So what are we going to do? Because I don't want to send, now I'm going to have two children at that school. I don't want to send my kids to school when they're going to have to be on half days again next year. I can't do that. My daughter had a horrible year this year. She was very stressed out. And somebody who has a disability, it's a very difficult situation for them to be in that type of environment. So my question is, I know you guys are working hard. I applaud you for your efforts and what you've been doing. And I appreciate it. But the summertime is when we all spoke and we talked about we were going to get done what needed to be done in that school to make sure that it was safe and proper for these kids. And now we kind of have to go back and start again in some of those rooms that we've already fixed because the, the problem wasn't fixed completely. So I, I guess I just, I'm very nervous that it's not going to be fixed again. And I know a lot of the parents share the same concerns I do. So that's... Okay, so to address one of the issues was the, the water that we believed was coming in through the flashing around the uh, lentils. Right. So that was approved on tonight's agenda on item 24 on the finance agenda. Okay. Okay, so that work will get done. Okay. And then we are prioritizing the inside of the building and we'll address that as we can. Um, we will make sure that we test before we put the kids back in and we're gonna make sure that the building is safe for them to go in. In Hopefully, reality, how much of that inside work do you think is going to be able to be completed over the summertime? That's up for the experts to tell us what we have to get done. Okay. And then we will get done what we have to and make it safe for the kids to be there and the staff and the parents and whoever else is in the building. As much as I don't mind Mr. Zega sending all these lovely messages and, you know, Honeywell, I'm kind of tired of receiving them. I and mean, you have to understand my frustration as well as the other parents' I'm frustration. I'm sending you a Honeywell. I'm telling you, item 24 approves <laughs> taking care of the outside. Because those ceiling the tiles are dropping like flies and it's becoming well, a real. To be honest with you, we, we found a, there's a better way that they're supposed to be attached. Okay. So we've talked to uh, Is that the name of the We talked to the name of the company that mitigates it for us. Okay. We found somebody else who does it a different way. Okay. If that meets the guidelines of what is an acceptable method for patching it, we're going to have the, the make sure the ceiling is totally resecured. Okay, because I just don't I really. This year was it was bad for us. It was bad for the kids, and it was bad I just, for everybody. Yeah, it and really nobody, was. Nobody and I just wanted really to be in this situation. I'm fearful of that ever happening again because that was, it was. You guys know. I mean, it was very difficult. <laughs> it was difficult on everyone. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Dan Grossberg, Islin. Um, to follow up on that, and, and I appreciate the, uh, the guidance that you've provided thus far, um, just uh, some questions on that, though. So this problem didn't spring up overnight, right? Um, and you've been engaged with outside consultants giving recommendations since at least April. Uh, from what I just heard, and I just want to make sure I heard that correctly, is now you need to go back and get bids to be done, even though it was determined months ago what, what the issues are and how to fix it. No, we have we just approved the bid today to do the exterior work. Not the external, the interior. We have to have them go back in because, as the lady just said, there are some areas that she feels are uh, becoming a problem again. So we're going to have those revisited to see if we need to do any other mitigation on those areas. Other than that, we're going to proceed with the plan that we had going back to April. Okay, and, and when are they going into uh, the school to determine, uh, you know? They're not going in before the 22nd. Sure, that's next Friday, right? Next Friday. Okay. Yes. But no timeline as to when after next Friday they would go in? I would assume, and I can't say this without talking it over with the facilities, but I would assume it's going to be the following Monday. Okay. And, and again, sorry to beat a dead horse, but like, I just want to make sure I'm 100% clear as to You're not, you're not what, beating a dead horse. So it was approved tonight to work on the flashing, and that, that should be a much longer term. Um, you said you also are going to engage on a long-term multi-year plan to fix it as well. That has not yet begun just yet. Are you waiting until... That will not, be, that will not happen when students are in the building. Those to meet with someone to figure out a plan? No, no, no. The, okay, the, that's the part the, I'm asking The remediation about. will not happen. Right. They right. are finalizing the, the, the extended pl year plan now. And then when that's done, we will be budgeting and doing things in the summer months and over breaks 
Great. when there are no students in, depending on what the severity of the issue that has to be resolved. If it can be done in a week, then it'll be done in a week. If it can't be done for six weeks, it won't be done until the summertime. And then it'll be made safe so the kids can be in the school with the teachers and whoever else is there sure. under safe, safe conditions. Excellent. And if I heard you correctly before, you said the schools will be tested again before the kids go in September? Absolutely. Is it going to be like the same kind of surface and air tests for both mold and asbestos? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure. I'll have to check with the adherent specialists and find out what we're recommended to do. We are recommended. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, hello, yes. Uh, my name is Salim Patel. Uh, I live in Islington, New Jersey, and I go to Kennedy High School. I uh, want to change the topic real quick on something more like curriculum-based. As you know, right now, it's a pretty stressful season of finals and, you know, you know, working really hard to try to get good grades and stuff. The thing is, like some other, oh. <laughs> some other, uh, some other high schools, like Colonia, they have an incentive put in place that if you have like an 83 or higher in the class, you don't gotta take the final. I believe that's like great inflation and it's uh, quite unfair to the other students in the township to be, you know, I wouldn't say suffering, but to having to undergo such stress during examination season. I just wanna know if like anything could be done about it to, like so the same incentives could apply to everyone in the township. That is something that the uh, administration and the board have been discussing about making things more consistent and done unilaterally throughout the district. Mm -hmm. So those things are all being looked at. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So motion. Motion by Mr. Molnar. Second. Second by Mr. Della Petro. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Meeting adjourned.